In the previous chapter, we mainly studied how to lay pipes and optical cables. And we also looked at common mistakes and how to avoid them. In this chapter, we will introduce the laying of aerial optical cables and some common problems in the routine process. First of all, let's begin with an introduction about aerial optical cable installation. EHS and security guidelines. The requirements for unloading and drum testing of optical cable are the same as those for underground optical cable scenarios. Therefore, no further details will be given here. This part, we will cover how to prepare aerial optical cables for installation, tools and materials used, common aerial cable installation hardware, optical cable reservation, and FAT installation. This section describes how to prepare tools and materials for laying aerial optical cables. Part 1. Kickoff Meeting The construction team leader gives safety instructions to all the team members. This includes precautions, division of work and tools to be used in the construction. Part 2. Traction and laying of aerial optical cables When pulling and laying aerial optical cable, there are four major considerations. These include working environment, tool equipment preparation, such as safety fence, ladder, etc. Installation of traction rope and mesh cover for the optical cable traction pulley four parts of optical fiber cable traction. Let's talk about these four topics separately. Now, in the video, we see a warning strip around the work site. The operator sets the ladder onto the cement pole. Operators wear safety belts for working at height. This step is to install the cable traction pulley. The operator climbs up the ladder to the work site under the supervision of the ground crew and fasten the safety harness before climbing. Using a wire or the pulley's own buckle, install the traction pulley on the optical cable and the linear cable guide pulley. Next, we will introduce the manufacture of traction ropes and nets. When the cable traction sheet is ready, prepare the traction rope on the ground. Step 1. Place the metal mesh at the head of the cable. Use the adhesive tape to wrap the ends of the metal mesh. The second step is to connect the end of the drawstring to the head of the net cover by means of a screw extractor. Finally fix the transaction rope to one end of the detent. Use the cable ties to bind the extra traction rope at the ends evenly. After preparing the traction rope and the net cover, this section describes the cable transaction limitations and the cable installation process. First, the operator carries the connecting detent and the traction rope of the optical fiber cable, which is under control of the ground personnel. The operator climbs up the ladder to the operation point and passes the head of the traction rope through the traction pulley in the direction of the cable traction. The traction personnel of ground optical cables should keep a proper traction angle and pull the traction rope using the nylon pulley that meets the requirements to do the optical cable online and straight traction. The maximum angle of the online traction should be no more than 27 degrees in order to meet the requirement of the dynamic bending radius of the optical cable. When the cable head passes through the upper pulley, pulling the traction cable uniformly along the traction route. In the communication rod of the single straight line segment, the traction rope is driven through the pulley by using the same method as the upper pulley. At the same time, 
guide the optical cable through the guide pulley of the straight line section. During the optical cable traction, ensure the optical cable is withdrawn and the angle optical cable is placed in a figure of 8, as shown in the following video. After the optical cables are led out from the cable tray, they should be fully untwisted and then coiled in a neat figure of 8 shape. Do not forcibly pull the cable. Place a protective, moisture proof rain cloth in the end of the duct. Do not let the optical cable touch the ground directly to avoid sharp and hard objects on the ground from scratching the outer sheath of the optical cable. This section describes the personnel distribution and haul speed of optical cables. The cable traction personnel must maintain a large angle and maintain a constant speed to pull the cable along the route. The optical cable needs to be of a sufficiently large angle to the pulley. Avoid the dynamic bending radius of the optical cable being less than 20 times the cable diameter during cable traction. During cable laying, carefully watch the meter mark to prevent the cable drawing speed from being too fast. In addition, the cable traction personnel must be distributed at a distance of about 15 meters. Optical cable traction at the transfer point. In the video, we see the cable being pulled at 90 degree transition. Proper personnel for laying optical cable in the transition section of the optical cables keep the personnel space at about 15 meters apart. Pre-install guide pulley on the communication pole at each corner. Also, the optical cable needs to be at a sufficiently large angle to the pulley. Avoid the dynamic bending radius of the optical cable being less than 20 times that of the cable diameter during the cable traction. At the other end of the optical cable traction, distribute the cable at a distance of about 15 meters. Traction cable with uniform speed. In the last session, we will introduce some examples during the optical cable traction. When the optical cable needs to cross the road or other obstacles in the course of pulling, personnel must be on duty to guide the traffic and ensure smooth communication, coordinating the actions of personnel at the far end and at the near end. The third part mainly introduces the installation of common hardware and the correct storage of optical cables. First of all, we will introduce installation of the tension section and the pre-twisted wire at the turn. In the video, the hardware installation personnel are shown on the ground using the winding method of the pre-twisted wire. First, separate the pre-stranded wire and with the cooperation of two people, bind the pre-stranded wire to the optical cable. Next, we will introduce the installation of pre-stranded wire on the communication pole. Install the pre-twisted wire according to the method shown on the ground. After tightening the optical cable with a cable tightener, tensioner, pay attention to maintain a certain arc during the tightening process. Prevent the running tension of optical cables from being higher than the technical specification. Fix the pre-stranded wire to the mounting point of the communication pole. Then the pre-stranded wire is twisted into the optical cable. Next we will introduce the draping installation for fitting in the straight section. Pre-select and combine the fittings on the ground such as the non-hanging point on the communication pole. Therefore, it is required to fix the hoop properly at the proper height of the communication pole to make the hanging point of the draping fixture 
in the straight line segment. Install the cable in the suspension after the cable is tightly connected and fasten them with tools. The connector box is fixed horizontally on the steel strand or vertically on the communication pole according to the design. In the picture we will see that the junction box is fixed horizontally on the steel strand at the corner according to the design requirements leaving the remaining cable neatly on the cable tray. The optical cable tray should be fully removed and the static bending radius of the optical cable should be more than 10 times the diameter of the optical cable. Measure the x-axis and the y-axis of the optical cable with the tape measure. After meeting the requirements, bind the optical cables neatly on the remaining cable racks. In the last part, we will briefly introduce the installation example of FAT. The FAT installation height must meet the design requirements. The height should be above the reach of adults. Last but not least, we will introduce how to fix the FAT and how to correctly bundle the optical cables. The cables led in and led out through different channels must be coiled neatly on the remaining cable tray. In addition, the optical cable also needs to be fully removed and the diameter of the cable tray must comply with the static bending radius of the optical cable. Cables are bundled neatly with cable ties. Note, the cable ties must not be too tight. Certain degree of redundancy must be reserved. Meanwhile, the FAT should be firmly fixed in the installation position as shown in the figure. This is the end of the main knowledge about aerial optical cable routing. In the next chapter, we will introduce common problems with aerial optical cable routing. Thank you.